Hello everyone. Who should the Lakers sign for their final roster spot? Today you will discover four possible candidates for this latest vacancy. Following the addition of Christian Wood to the squad, speculation mounted over the utilization of his final spot in the 15-man squad. With multiple avenues available, including instant contracts unsecured or guaranteed, waiting in the acquisition market or exploring trade possibilities, the Lakers face a decision dilemma. Contrary to popular belief, the urgency to fill this vacancy immediately is not as pressing as it might seem. While they can choose to block you now, there is no obligation to do so. The NBA requires a team to begin the season with a minimum of 14 players, not necessarily the full 15 players. This offers flexibility, allowing a team to keep that spot open for an extended period of time. However, a potential penalty looms if the spot remains vacant until the end of the regular season. Considering these nuances, the Lakers have a multitude of strategic choices at their disposal, and this article will delve into each scenario as they prepare for the upcoming season. Discussing immediate replacements on the free agent market is a logical starting point, although the available options appear to be dwindling. On the other hand, predicting potential acquisition market candidates can be a bit challenging, but some names may be emerging as contenders. If the Lakers are considering adding a new player immediately, it would be prudent to opt for a non-guaranteed contract. This arrangement would not only allow them to assess the player's performance and fit in real time but also retain the flexibility to explore options in the buyout market later on. One intriguing name floating around is Usman Garuba. It's somewhat surprising that a team hasn't snagged him yet. Given his age and potential, he represents an exciting prospect for the Lakers. Especially in scenarios where the team might face injuries in their forward and center positions, Garuba could be a reliable fill-in. He possesses the agility to match up and defend against power forwards effectively, and he's adequately robust to contend with most centers. True, NBA giants like Nikola Jokic or Joel Embiid are virtually unstoppable, but Garuba's defensive prowess, even at his size, is commendable. Evidence of this is his standout defensive rating from the last season, where he emerged as one of the few shining defensive players on his team. Diving deeper into his defensive metrics, Garuba was among a trio of players on his team with a positive defensive rating, the others being Alperin Sengen and Tyrese. While his offensive contributions might not be as flashy, there's promise. Particularly noteworthy is his progression as a three-point shooter, boasting a commendable 40.8% from beyond the arc and an impressive 41.4% from the corner three. This marked development, especially from his inaugural NBA year. Another compelling aspect of Garuba's profile is his age. At just 21, the Lakers have the potential to mold him further and integrate him into their long-term vision. For the final slot in the roster, you're essentially looking for potential, commitment, and perhaps a harmonious locker room presence. While there's a lingering question of whether Garuba would prefer a pivotal role in a team under reconstruction, the Lakers offering him a non-guaranteed contract is an enticing proposition. Stanley Johnson is an interesting consideration when exploring options for the 15th slot in a team's roster. Ideally, this position should be reserved for an up-and-coming talent ripe for grooming or an individual who can amplify the team's camaraderie. Johnson could potentially tick the latter box. While I personally harbor wishes for him to secure a substantial role in a prominent team, the prevailing scenario suggests a limited likelihood of that materializing. Even after a commendable stint with San Antonio, the market hasn't buzzed with much enthusiasm for him. Acknowledging that Johnson isn't renowned for his prowess from beyond the arc, recent stats have hinted at a steady progress in this domain. He recorded a 45% accuracy rate from the three-point range in the previous season based on 45 attempts, while amassing 34 over the combined stretch of the prior three years. The figures aren't stellar but are neither dismal. Additionally, when his defensive contributions are taken into account, he undoubtedly merits inclusion in team rotations. He may not be a top-tier pick, but slotting him anywhere between the 10th and 11th position seems justified. There's no denying my admiration for Johnson, he's undeniably earned a more pivotal role with a leading squad. However, the circumstances suggest otherwise. Given this backdrop, offering him a non-guaranteed contract to bolster the Lakers' bench depth could be a shrewd move. In unforeseen scenarios, where players like Jared Vanderbilt or Rue Hakimura are indisposed, Johnson could seamlessly slot in. He presents a balanced mix of defense, akin to the aforementioned duo, and a gradually improving three-point shooting finesse. Should the Lakers decide to bypass prospects like Johnson or Usman Garuba, waiting for the buyout market could be their next best strategy.
During this interim period, they could dabble with 10-day contracts, potentially even extending one to Johnson. But let's set the topic of short-term contracts aside for a moment. Navigating the buyout market might uncover some hidden gems, with players like Joe Harris being potential candidates to watch out for. The fact that he was traded, or more aptly termed, had his salary offloaded to the rebuilding Detroit Pistons, seems to have escaped the general discourse. Given the Pistons' projected performance this season, it's not overly optimistic, suggesting Harris might find himself in the buyout market unless he surprises everyone with a standout season. Despite the possibility of the Pistons retaining him throughout the year, this would inadvertently reduce the playtime for their emerging talents. Joe Harris may not be revered for his defense, but his proficiency from three-point range cannot be ignored. If the Lakers urgently need to beef up their long-range offense, they'll be hard-pressed to find a more competent marksman at such an affordable price. Boasting a career average of 43.7% from beyond the arc and an even more impressive 46.5% from the corner three, Harris's stats are undeniably exceptional. While he may not be celebrated for his defensive contributions, his offensive ability could be a significant asset, especially if the Lakers are considering someone of his caliber for their number 15 roster spot. Suppose their requirements evolve and they are looking for another side player. In this case, it is worth monitoring some attack options. One such intriguing prospect is Davis Bertans. If the recent acquisition of Christian Wood doesn't pan out as expected, the Lakers could look for a three-point specialist in their frontcourt. Bertans could potentially fit that mold. Unexpectedly, he remains in the OKC Thunder. However, with the Thunder's current roster bloated at 19 players, and with the need to cut it down to 15 before the start of October, Bertans' tenure with them could be short-lived. Whether the OKC Thunder will retain Davis Bertans for long remains to be seen. My skepticism arises from the possibility of him not making it out of training camp or perhaps being involved in a mid-season trade, after which a buyout seems likely. While defensive ability may not be his strong point, Bertans has demonstrated impressive skills from beyond the arc, with a career average of 39.8% and an astounding 50% on corner kicks. These numbers are hard to rival, positioning Bertans as a potential target in the buyout market. On a more ambitious note, there could be a potential surprise if Kelly Olenek finds herself in the takeover scenario. While the Utah Jazz are unlikely to initiate this, the potential for a trade and subsequent acquisition by another team seems plausible given their stacked frontcourt. While we are essentially discussing trading a less-than-stellar defender for a slightly better one, the distinction is worth noting. There remains hope that Christian Wood will improve his defensive game, but my confidence in that substantial evolution is limited. Even putting concerns regarding Wood aside, the unpredictable nature of the NBA means having depth and options is invaluable. In the unfortunate event of an injury, someone like Olenek could serve as an excellent backup option, filling in the gaps perfectly. However, narrowing down my top picks among current free agents, Usman Garuba and Stanley Johnson definitely stand out. However, there is lingering skepticism about the Lakers actually opting for them. If the Lakers decide to weather the buyout market, keeping an eye on talent like Joe Harris, Davis Bertans and Kelly Olenek could be beneficial. Now tell me, should the Lakers immediately sign another talent to an unsecured contract, or would it be wiser to delay and monitor the buyout market as the season progresses? I look forward to hearing your ideas, please share your perspectives in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.